Hello everyone, it's lovely to see you and thank you so much for joining. My name is Eleanor Schwab and I'm a head designer. Um, I live and work uh, in London. I am in millinery for seven, eight years. I started as a textile designer, but uh, when I figured that um, millinery is, is an amazing profession, I started and I never looked back. I'm really happy with what I'm doing right now. Uh, I'm making collections uh, and I uh, also create um, uh, bespoke commissions for my clients. And I, a year ago, during the pandemic, I started a YouTube channel where I share um, short videos about hat making and different tips and uh, tricks of um, about different skills and uh, how you can create different decorations and so on. Something that might be really useful, especially when you're just starting out. So uh, if you have not chance yet to look at my uh, YouTube video, video, videos, sorry, uh, you're welcome. Um, my channel is called Eleanor Schwab Millinery, just as my brand. Um, so today we're going to talk about millinery tools. Obviously, learning about millinery, having uh, basic skills is very much important. Uh, having your own style, uh, knowing which materials you like to work with. But the most important thing, or maybe not the most important thing, but very much important, and uh, that helps you during the process of making and make the, the process much smoother um, and easier, are uh, millinery tools. The correct millinery tools might make your life much easier during the process of hat making. And today I'm going to share um, those tools that I use on an everyday basis and I simply cannot survive without them. Some of them related to millinery, some of them do not relate to millinery at all. But uh, to be honest, in hat making, there are tools that um, you can purchase on millinery websites, but some of the tools that you might adopt from different uh, professions, um, same as, as, uh, as fashion, for example, graphic design or whatever other uh, creative industries, crafts and arts, and they could be perfect for hat making. Uh, and those tools are very useful. So I made here a whole list, so I don't miss anything. But um, if any of the tools that I did not, that I, I forget, I will just um, comment later on that after the session under, under the post. So anyway, um, the most important millinery tool is a hat block. I already had um, a previous webinar, old webinar about talking about uh, different types of hat blocks. Today I'm not going to talk about the hat blocks, but uh, about a very important tool that we have to use in order to prepare and protect the hat block at the same time. This is a cling film. Cling film or any clear cellophane that you can find without print though, because when you um, when you cover the, the block and, and, and then you, you um, mold the material under the heat and, and, and sometimes ironing and steam, uh, the dye from the, for the print can transfer onto your fabric. So be very careful, you do not use anything that has print on it. So that's why cling film is, is really an amazing tool that you can easily find um, in your kitchen. You just wrap hat block or anything that you're using to mold your hats um, to protect the hat block because obviously uh, wood doesn't really like the moisture or doesn't really like the stiffener so let's take care of hat blocks especially they're quite expensive it's it's a very um, expensive tool and we don't really want to um, to do anything to spoil it also cling film helps for the material to get off the block much much easier so it's like almost no troubles at all also it protects uh, the cling film protects both uh, the, the the future hat the molded hat and also the head block uh, from from the stiffening from uh, from the dye of the of the material itself because dark colors that do transfer uh, on, onto the onto the surface of the wood or any other material that you're using for head blocking so be very 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 careful about it 
after you finish blocking, you remove the cling film because our head block is made of wood and it needs to breathe. It's a pure, pure, wonderful wood. So let it breathe after the blocking. So that's about um, cling films. Uh, another tool that you can find in the kitchen and very useful in millinery is baking paper. Surprisingly, it's amazing paper that helps a lot during the, um, the hat making process and I use it every single day. First of all, it's much better than the regular paper because it doesn't stick to anything. What I use it for is uh, when I need to iron the hat blocks, uh, sorry, not the hat blocks, but uh, the molded material like a cinema, uh, for example, because uh, let's be honest, the irons that um, most of the millionaires use in the studio, they never clean. Uh, this is my little baby. It's never clean. No, it doesn't matter how, <laughs> how much I try to clean it every time I use it. Um, stiffeners, cinema, um, other materials, uh, metallic foil that you use a lot. It always, it, I mean, it, it's impossible to get away with this. It just sticks to the surface. That's it. So that's why using um, baking paper on top of the cinema, it just helps to protect the surface, especially if you're working with bright colors like white, ivory, uh, baby pink. Um, you just cover it, cover your cinemas or uh, other materials that you work with every time when you need to iron. But it's just for the for the straws, not for the felts. Um, okay, so this is the baking paper. And also a great thing because it's always in the kitchen, like most of the kitchens. And when the roll of baking paper or cling film is over, you can always keep, uh, you know, this, the, the, the tube and use it for creating, um, what it's called, um, curls for the cinema bias strip, uh, which I have an example on one, one of my YouTube channels. Uh, where I show how to create a beautiful bias strip. This is a cinema bias strip, right? So, of course, steaming is really, really helps to create a beautiful bias strip. But I'm just going to apply a little bit of water. This is another uh, amazing tool, uh, bottle spray. Uh, on, um, on my YouTube channel, I use it a lot because uh, cinema uh, before you do anything with cinema, it's best to apply water, sometimes a lot of water when you're blocking, and sometimes just a little bit of water when you create decorations or something like that, or for the rolling edge. So this spray that we usually use for um, flowers at home, they are perfect for the purpose of spraying uh, a little bit of uh, cinema in order to create different decorations. So I spray with a little bit of water, and then I hold it and stretch it for while I count to five and then I take it off and that's very beautiful twirl that you can use for your decorations and for your hats very easy and this tool is really amazing you also can use um, the other side of the brushes or the pans or anything that has tubular uh, tubular uh, side even pencils so the water is just regular tap water. That's a lot of questions that I get in my YouTube videos. What is inside? <laughs> it's just regular tap water, not hot, not cold, just, just the tap water. That's all the magic. So blocking pins. Blocking pins is a massive subject because there are all a lot of different types. Um, you can find on the Milliner website, usually there's just only one type the, 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 with the red um, and or, um, or blue one, um, which, which are perfect for hat making, but I found other ones that work perfectly for me and I use them for different purposes. So there are four different types and all of them I purchased from uh, art store, office department store. It, th those are just the clips for uh, push pins for the board but uh, it just there's so many different types of it and um, these ones for example 
you can see them they they with the round tip and uh, they're quite thin the pins are quite thin which is great for for wood for pinning uh, for, um, for blocking over the wooden head block it goes really nice inside especially um, if we work with um, modern head blocks because the, the wood is really soft and it's really amazingly easy to work with them but if you have a vintage head block those are made of a very tough wood so uh, I would recommend you use a hammer or a very fine pins uh, that goes really smooth into the wood or you can use like little nails that are perfect for when you use um, a hammer which we're gonna talk about in a second so as I said these are perfect because they have thin needle and it's not very long so it's perfect the only um, negative side of this that they bend easily because they're very very fine needle but uh, they're not expensive um, in the craft stores they're like a, a pound to three pounds which are quite affordable and you can always order more if you uh, bend a lot of, of those but they're really really useful uh, these pins um, also push pins for the board those are great when you're blocking felt especially if you block with an open crown technique is when you block separately crown and separately uh, the brim and when it's an open crown it means that you block uh, in the middle you have to meet a lot of material a lot of felt in a in a very uh, limited surface so it means that there are going to be a lot of folds and it requires a lot of steaming and a lot of stretching so these pins help to reduce amount of folds because because of their flat surface they sort of like keeping the material closer to the head block avoiding all these folds so these are really amazing for this purpose when you work with the when you want to avoid, avoid any any folds any multiple folds on on a small surface these are also great because they have a flat tip and very easy to use a hammer also compared to circular ones after 20 30 40 um, pins like this your fingers really hurting because because it's rounded but when you work with the pins that have um, flat surface it's much easier for your fingers so it doesn't get tired so easily but the uh, the negative side of this that the, these particular pins they have quite thick uh, needle very thick needle if you can see this and uh, well, it's quite hard to penetrate it into the wood anyway, so that's what hammer really comes to the rescue. So this is about the pins, and the last ones that I use, those are the um, long ones, if you can see, they're quite long, those are tailor pins. Uh, I wouldn't say they're good for the, uh, for the wood because uh, they bend really 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 easily however you can find a way how to use this uh, there are some particular ways when you work with the rope so these are really brilliant but what these are really good for is when you're blocking on a styrofoam head block or polystyrene head block because those are so soft and they don't really hold uh, the pressure of uh, small pins like this or like this they just come out really really quickly these pins so the longer the pin for the styrofoam or polystyrene head blocks it's just absolutely perfect because it goes easily inside and it just secures there so this is about the head blocks oh uh, sorry uh, head pins if you have any questions please do um, ask so I can see the questions and I can answer them. Okay. Hello, Margaret. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining. I hope you're enjoying so far. Um, so we're gonna move to the next tool and it's a hammer.
So hammer is a really necessary tool sometimes when we're working with the tough uh, things, really making the process easy. But uh, there are different hammers, and this is the first one that I purchased. It was I really needed a hammer, and that was the only available in the store. But I found it's like massive. It's really, really big. It's good for um, for putting the um, the frames on the wall, <laughs> but it's not really good for the milliner because it's too heavy and it's too big. So uh, the other one that I have is this one. So you can compare. It's smaller. It's neater and um, it's much easier to work so you don't have to uh, because it's heavy so it's, it's like you're working out so your hand will be really really tired very soon so, and if you're working with this tiny and very fine hammer it's much easier to it's still very easy to um, to penetrate the, the pins inside the head block but it's much easier on you because you don't have to work with a very heavy item in your hand. So this is about the hammers. Um, and next one is gonna go about the pliers as the next logical step because sometimes you do need to take the pins out <laughs> and the right pliers you use, the easier it is for you. So. Well, I have this display. Well, this is what I found really, really important is when you have all your tools accessible at any time. So I prefer to have them on display so I can see them. And by heart, I already remember where each tool is located. This is originally is, um, I got it as a gift for my makeup, but I don't really use a lot of makeup. So it became a really amazing. <laughs> Um, amazing case for keeping my tools and I have all the sections for the pliers and for the scissors and for my brushes which we're gonna talk about them later so it's just really great because I can see what I have and immediately I can use it I have another one this is a second edition because uh, this um, set already got really really busy so I got another one I think this one is just for, I don't really know what it is for, but uh, it has a lot of pockets and it's just perfect because I have all my tools here and I can see them and I can grab them every time when I need them. Um, okay, there's one question. Please, I would like to know if the ironing of the cinnamon makes it soft for molding or is just to straighten the cinnamon. The ironing is not used for making the cinema soft. Water makes cinema soft, so then you can easily block it and mold it over the hard block. Ironing uh, is used for several reasons. First of all, it smoothens the area of the straw. So if you have this little um, um, uneven surfaces or folds or, or, or whatever it is during the blocking and when cinema dries it so, sort of like stretches back and when it dries the folds might appear so ironing and pressing with the iron makes it makes the, the folds disappear which makes the finish really really um, perfect and also uh, sometimes when you need the cinema to dry really really fast but like in UK the weather is not always sunny so it's not really helping and ironing or using a hair dryer also helps for cinema to dry faster so that's another reason and also ironing helps for the, the different layers of cinema bond together that's what we need to be honest when we uh, when we block several layers and we take it off the layers have to stick together there's, there has to be no gap in between the layers. So ironing helps um, for the cinema to bond. I hope that answers the question. And uh, I'm gonna go back to, to the uh, flyers. I'm just gonna reply to the question as, as soon as I see them because after that they go up and I don't really see the questions anymore. So I kind of miss them. So pliers. Uh, pliers for the for the pins 
Well, these are perfect ones. This, that when you can, you have one side, uh, sort of like flat, so you can grab the pin like this and take it out. So these pliers are the best. These ones are not, but these are great because they have both sides flat. Uh, these are perfect for uh, what it's what's the word? Well, this is great for 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 wires. Um, when you need to catch the the, uh, the, the, uh, the wire in between and just twist it. So this is perfect without uh, um, destroying the wire too much. Uh, sometimes you can just wrap it with the, with the um, a paper uh, sticking tape so that uh, you don't break uh, cotton wire um, cotton thread on the wire. Uh, other pliers. Also for the soft wire, I can use these pliers. There's a previously word for the, for the nails, but I, um, I used them, then I decided, well, they were not that great. And instead of throwing them out, I'm using them in millinery and they're great for soft wires. And I also recycled the material, didn't throw it away. I am reusing it. And this is another tool, another pliers that are good for the wire. It's same as the previous one. It's flat on one side, so it just catches the wire and it just breaks it. Very, very easy. With the with pliers, I put them back. So next time I need them, I know exactly where they are. Just don't throw your tools everywhere after you finish working. Don't be lazy, put them back, because next time, if you don't put them back, you might take um, you might just waste extra time on just looking out for your tools, especially when there's a lot of projects and there's a lot of materials and such a mess, which is usually happens when, <laughs> when you make a hat. Um, because sometimes you need a lot of materials, a lot of fabric, so everything is just everywhere. So bottom line, don't be lazy, just put your tools inside and keep them safe in the same place. Uh, wire, so as we talk about the wire, there are different types. Um, I'm working mainly with uh, cotton covered wire. So it's a cotton thread which is wrapped around um, around the, the wire and they, they come in different colors, mainly uh, white, black and brown. I don't, they might come in different colors but it's a very niche wire so you can't find it everywhere maybe some suppliers but um, not a lot but what you can do with a cotton wire uh, you can always use a paint like a gouache or uh, acrylic paint acrylic not gouache acrylic paint and you can just paint the wire if you want to match the color exactly to the color of the hat or if you're using wire as 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 a piece um, or a hat band so having white uh, cotton thread wire you can always uh, paint it in different colors purple red green whatever whatever suits you so there are different thicknesses um they come in thick thicknesses like 0.8 which are perfect for flower making because they're quite soft um, one millimeter which is perfect for small fascinators like um, let me show you like this one for example I do have a Y here and it's one millimeter and it's absolutely perfect it still holds the shape but um, it's it's so it's quite soft but it's perfect holds the shape. Uh, the other one um, upgraded is 1.2. This is great for wide brim hats because it's a bit more stronger and it's perfect holding the shape like uh, this hat for example. Oops. Um, 1.2. It's a big hat. 
and the uh, the last one that I think available on the market but maybe I'm missing something is 1.4 which is really really strong and it's really great for when you create a really uh, massive big big hats uh, which need a lot of support obviously so sorry So here's the white comes uh, it just it comes like that so before you prepare it for um, for your hats you need to let me just move this just a second so it comes in a shape like this in a circle wrapped so before you start working with your hats you need to create a flat wire so what you do you just trying to um, the, undo the um, uh, the tendency of the wire to go like a spiral so instead of having it a spiral you have to make it flat in this particular um, tactic for that the particular way of how to do it but it's it's a must-have because uh, if you leave your hat um, if you use a spiral wire that you didn't flatten it before you stitch it into your hat worst time the wire this particular wire it has the memory of going back into the spiral shape and what it's gonna do your hat is just gonna be deformated and there's nothing you can do about it so just spare a little bit more time before you sti um, stitch the wire into your hats and just go from the spiral shape into the flat one so this is about the wires and I'm just gonna show you how to do it so let me cut a short wire and Use my pliers, those perfect one for the wire, and I'm gonna cut the wire. There it is. And not forget, put the pliers back when you finish, so you don't lose them. It just takes a second, but it really saves you time. So, can you see this? Um, so as I said, um, the wire, it has the memory of going spiral, so you need to flatten it. So what you do is you just trying to, um, sort of like bringing it back from its original shape. So I'm sort of unspiral it. So I'm going backwards. So if the wire goes this direction, I'm trying to bring it back backwards something like that I'm trying not to bend the wire so be very careful about it once you bend the, the wire it's really hard to bring it back into a straight um, line by bending I mean just don't 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 bend it like this yeah I did it so what I'm doing I can just flip it over and then sort of like You see, it's already going straight, flat, I mean, but it's very important that you do it. There. Sometimes it takes longer if it's, if it's, a, if it's a bigger piece for, for a bigger hat, uh, but you just have to practice, find the way how it's easier for you to do it and, and just practice. Okay? So that's what you do with the wire. You always have to prepare it before you stitch into the um, into your hat, so that uh, it's it's absolutely flat, just to avoid um, any any deformation of your hat later. Stiffener. Uh, there are different types of stiffeners, and um, this is a water-based stiffener. This is also water-based stiffener, and this is a chemical one. So they're all quite very, very simil similar. The only thing is that the, the 
water-based stiffener is great for straws and felts. But the chemical it has, uh, well, this is one is for straw, and they're also for felts. Uh, so chemical stiffener is really great. Also, water-based stiffener is really great. There's nothing, anything bad with any of those. They work perfectly fine. They're great for hats. The only thing is that chemical do smell really, really badly. It does smell, so you have to wear a mask. You have to open all the windows, so uh, ventilated area, because it's quite toxic chemicals. And if you're pregnant or if you're uh, breastfeeding, never use it. It just, it's not good for the health um, for you or for the baby. So just please be careful with this. Also, it's very much flammable, so you have to be very careful how you store it and where you store it. So at some particular stage <laughs> of my career, I stopped using it because it does really smell and gives me headache. And I figure out that um, water-based stiffener is, is, is absolutely great and I love it. It's quite similar to PVA and maybe in fact it is a PVA, I have no idea. But it works very similar. It um, looks very similar. It smells quite similar. So uh, the color is quite similar. The only differences that you can find on the market is dissolved one ready to use. It's quite liquidish. And the one that uh, you have to um, dissolve with water. So it's quite thick and you can feel it. Uh, both are great. So this one is ready to use. So you buy and you just forget about the headache. This one you have to dissolve. Read the label. It says uh, use one part stiffener to four parts water. I use sometimes less parts of water if I want the hat to be stiffer or if um, um, if I just, um, for example, the way I prepare my felt, I uh, put them into the under the sink until they're really, really soaked with water and then I extract the water. I'm squeezing the, the excess out, but there's still some water inside anyway. So that I'm um, taking in consideration that it might also dissolve uh, the stiffener, the water that is already in the felt. So I might um, use not four, uh, one to four parts of water, but one to three or one to two. It very much depends. So comes with experience. You just try uh, using a very liquid stiffener or using a very um, uh, not very liquid stiffener just to see how the hats turn out so that you understand what the difference are. Uh, but yes, read the label, One, uh, some of them are ready to use, so expect them to come as quite liquidish, uh, with water inside already, and some of them, they arrive as quite thick, so it's your job to dissolve and prepare the stiffener for stiffening your hats, straws, or felts, or you know, cinemas, or whatever you're working with. So, this is about stiffeners. Um, another amazing tool that I would like to share with you is this and this is a corset bone it's used for fashion for uh, you know for the for the for the corsets it's a really amazing tool and it's perfect for uh, helping you to take the um, the material take the blocked hat off the hat block because sometimes you know after stiffening and using um, steaming and using the iron sometimes well let's be frank most of the times uh, the molded shape sticks to the surface of the hat block and it, it especially if it's a crown and it's really hard to take it off and sometimes you're just like um, really damaging the the shape because you're really forcing the um, the shape to come off <laughs> But it's stick and there is nothing much you can do um, so what you can do is to use this tool and hi from Lagos so lovely that you joined um, so this tool what you do is well, let's I don't really have any blocked head but let's assume I have head blocked on Okay, let's assume it's sort of like blocked on the head block, molded. So what you do, you carefully put the stick inside 
and like slicing the cake carefully, carefully going around the shape, helping for the material to, to become a bit loose. And then you can easily remove your blocked hat from the head block. So next time when you're blocking, just, just try. You can use a, a ruler or anything else that is quite thin and flat, whatever helps. But um, the beauty of this particular uh, tool is that it's, it's very flexible. It's, it's non-breakable, or well, at least I never managed to break it. And it, it's quite smooth here on the edge. So it's most likely not gonna break your material, unlike, uh, for example, um, a ruler or any other sharp tool. So try find this tool in um, fashion stores where, where you can buy fabrics and, and other stuff. So that's why I bought this one. They usually or just eBay or Amazon, whatever is available uh, for you in your country. Uh, they come in set of few, Thing, few I think in the set but um, I have like 10 but I still using one uh, so yeah this is a great tool just give it a go another one um, brushes 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 are really really good uh, for uh, felts yeah those are for felts for felts when you need to uh, create a really nice and smooth a surface you steam them a little bit after they blocked and you brush them steaming a little bit and then brushing the surface around it um, really great tool it could be any brush from um, I don't know what this what this was from but for example this one is for for nails and this one has it's a metal brush it's for shoes really really great really um, recommended to use uh, either you want to clean the felt uh, polish it uh, by polish i mean uh, just give it uh, if, if, if it was in your studio for example for quite some time and you need to to you know brush the dust off these are really great and it also gives a really nice surface like really really um, tender fluff as a, as a final touch when you use the brushes and the steam when you finish uh, blocking your hat so uh, the brush is really great so have them in your studio if, even toothbrush might help so just when you're using to, uh, brushes in your home and then, for example, use it for your nails, but, but then you don't need it anymore, don't throw it away. Just wash it and keep it in your studio for, for your hats. It's, it's really great. Measuring tapes. Really, um, my personal recommendation and really saves a lot of time. Uh, these ones, it really takes a while to put them, um, to roll them back as an OCD person, I really need all my um, tools to be neat. So when I use them, I always uh, have to roll them back. But this one is really amazing because it does a job for you. There's a little click here, you open and it closes. So it's, it's very easy and then your studio looks much neater and uh, highly recommended to use. It really makes life very, very easy. Um, glue. Uh, one of my favorite glue and also recommended is Yoohoo. This is a teeny, teeny, tiny one, but um, you can buy it in, in the bigger quantities, of course. Uh, I use it for multiple um, techniques. I use it for uh, sometimes I do attach the bias strip with the glue, which really helps to keep it in place until I start stitching it. Uh, but just be careful and use it just a little bit so you don't see it through through the material But if this happens use a little bit of a nail polish remover a little bit and it will just uh, clean uh, the, It will just clean the glue away So it's great for fabric. It's great for straws. It's great for felts um, And use it for many other techniques uh, It's it dries clear 
which is very much important, not any other color, just clear, and that's great. It also has, um, um, it dries fast, also very much important, but the most important thing that it dries clear, and you don't, it, it just, you don't see it when it dries, so that's quite important. Um, thimbles. I do recommend you use thimbles, even if you might think that, you know, you can handle without thimbles and it's much easier without the thimbles, but believe me, this is your best friend. And as your best friend, it has to beat you perfectly. It has to be like extension of your uh, hand. It has to be so comfortable to wear. So it has to be perfect size, not too small, not too big. But if you have nothing, if there's nothing you can fix if it's too small, but if it's too big, what you can do is just to put a, a little bit of tissue inside or wrap your finger a little bit with tissue and then put the, the thimble on top. This is how you fix this shape. And also it just makes it a bit softer for you to wear the thimble. So it's not as uncomfortable as you might think. So this is about the thimbles and obviously uh, I started my whole collection of thimbles and I, when I travel, I don't bring any gifts for myself. I just bring thimbles, the one that I can actually use, not one, uh, those that, you know, just for the, for the, for the gifts, but um, those that you can use. And I have my own collection and for each task that I have to do, have to make that I have a very particular thimble. Scissors. You must have a lot of scissors. There's no way around it. I have a lot of scissors. Uh, this is a teeny tiny collection. Um, I have like about 10, 15 different scissors because all of them for different purposes. These are for the threads and for different types of threads. The scissors for felts, scissors for straw, scissors for paper, scissors for fabric. Scissors for fabric are the most important ones. Never ever try to cut anything except for the fabric because you might ruin the, um, the scissors really easily they must be sharp they must stay sharp you can put a little bit of, of um, fabric on those scissors so that you know they belong for fabrics um, this is a scissor sharpener have it in your studio uh, if you need to sharpen your scissors you can always do it or you can buy new ones uh, whatever you prefer okay so oh and this is a really great tip uh, I cannot live without this ruler this one I, I think this is for architects but it's amazing and really helps when you need to bar to to cut cinema on bias on a diagonal and when you have to measure like 9 10 12 20 centimeters wide and it's a big piece. <laughs> well, it's, it's not a very long um, ruler, unfortunately, but what it has, uh, it has these lines, which are parallel to each other. So that's how you know that you measuring a straight line. It just helps you with the lines here and, and these lines. And then there is, you, you don't even need to, to measure. It has numbers, one, two, three, four, five, till 14. It's, it's a small one, but maybe you can buy a bigger one. But it's really amazing tool if you need to cut something on a bias or you might have to be sure that you're cutting a straight, uh, you're measuring a straight line. This is, this rule is really great. Um, steamers. Steamers are very much important, aren't they? Um, I'm using kettle. I don't have a professional steamer and to be honest, um, I, I'm so much happy with my kettle. It's just a regular kettle, uh, the one from the kitchen. I just open the lid, I close the lid. It works perfectly great. I use it for felt. But I also have a small steamer, this one. It's not very much powerful, but it's really great for, for trimmings uh, for cinema trimmings when you need to create small decorations uh, and you don't need a big massive power of steam because uh, well to be honest it, it's really powerful it's really hot and sometimes really easy to burn your hands so when you work with this one be really careful and keep your hands really 
like at least um, half a meter, 40 centimeter above the kettle. So this little baby is, is really amazing because uh, using just for small decorations of the cinema or just, um, where was it, uh, or this one that I showed at the very beginning, this is perfect. It's, it's not too strong, but it's quite enough. It's quite enough for uh, for small decorations. So you might you might invest in a little one for the for the decorations and straws, and just use the kettle um, for felts. Which this uh, is great for felts. This one is not going to work because it's not powerful enough. Uh, just maybe I'll find how powerful it is. But um, no, I don't know. To twenty to forty. Ah. Uh, um, 120 watts so no this is quite um weak but it's great for the straws so you might you might use it as for the irons i never use steam irons although you can try and maybe some of them already using steam irons when um you need to work with the felts or straws i if i need steaming i use the kettle but for, for the iron I prefer a basic one, it's, it's very very simple, it's one of the cheapest ones, but it does a really amazing job. The only thing you just have to keep it um, clean as much as you can and don't forget the baking paper that I was talking at the very beginning. So very basic iron, no steam and it does all the magic. So I think I went through most of the tool or all the tools that I wanted to talk about. Oh, one amazing tip that I will not get to uh, let you know is about the brushes. When you use chemical stiffener, for those of you who prefer to use chemical stiffener, using brushes and keeping them alive for quite some time is the channel challenge. So you either put them in a thinner, uh, but they do smell. So. I, I can't stand the smell. So the way that I found is when you wrap the the brush after you used it with a stiffener. So you you try to extract stiffener as much as you can back into the into the tube, and you wrap it with a cling film carefully and tightly. Wrap it with a cling film or with a uh, cellophane bag, and you seal it, the brush. You don't need to use a thinner and it will uh, stay soft until the next time that you're going to use it. If you forget to do it, that's it. You can throw the brush out away. And the last thing on my list that I wanted to share is using a sanding paper. Sometimes you need to sand uh, edges of felt. Uh, if, for example, you're cutting it, uh, the, the brim, and... Um, Hello, Dorothy from Nigeria. Thank you for joining us. Um, so, uh, sanding paper, when you cut in the brim and you want to leave it as it is without the wiring and without the trimming, you just want to leave the clean uh, edge, like one of my hats, just a second, I'm going to show you. Okay, this one. So uh, it's a fedora, it's like with a, um, um, like a floppy, floppy hat because it doesn't have the wire. Um, thank you, Jill. I'm glad that you enjoyed the class. Thank you so much. Uh, so in this case, when you use the scissors and you don't have this amazing tool that I, I really want to get one day, but it's so bloody expensive. But anyway, it's really amazing for those who love making hats from um, uh, leave the, um, just the neat edge. Um, hello, Rosemary. Hello from Ghana. Um, what you can do is you're using sanding paper. And this is what uh, this one is. It doesn't say. It's quite rough one. And what you do, you're just sanding the edge so that you get rid of all of the um, signs of the, uh, of the scissors. Because when you cut, you still have to close them, which creates this little teeny tiny gap. And then you open and cut them. 
open and cut them. So you want it or you don't want it, but you're still going to have this um, uneven surface, which is great to, to take care of with sanding paper, rough one, ideally. Uh, the tool that I was talking about, it's really amazing. Um, it's, uh, it just, you put it next to the, to the crown and there's a knife on the other side and then you just hold it and you just go around the crown and it cuts the brim perfectly. So you don't need to use a sanding paper and you don't need to use the scissors. It's really professional, it's really amazing. This tool is really great for those who wish to create hats like this, fedoras, without trimming and so they look really neat and perfect. So I think this is all for today and I hope to see all of you on my next webinar uh, in a few weeks. Um, if you sign up for my page, Ellen Schwab Millinery on Facebook, uh, you will get the notifications because usually I post uh, all my webinars on the, my Facebook page. And also if you, watch, if you wish to receive email notifications, uh, please um, uh, send me direct message with your email address and I will put you on the list and next time I have webinar or anything uh, related to my classes or um, anything any events that I'm participating in you will be the first ones to know also if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel uh, you can always go on YouTube my, uh, my page is Alan Schwab Millinery uh, just as my brand, subscribe. I do post uh, different videos um, every month, every two weeks uh, about hat making, different useful tips, and um, I hope that might be useful. And also, I have tutorials at the Hat Talk magazine, which come out every month. Uh, it's a subscription magazine, but you can have a 20% discount when you sign up with my code, Elena, E-L-E-N-A, at the checkout. And um, I post uh, my tutorials there, quite useful, together with many, many other designers. And it's an amazing magazine for um, hat making, especially for the beginners. Uh, a lot of useful information. It comes out every month. I do really recommend it. Thank you so much uh, for being part of this webinar. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact, message me direct or via my uh, email. Uh, sign up for my letters by direct. And uh, any questions about my hat making uh, uh, classes online or for those who are in London or um, recorded videos that I have. And if you have any suggestion for the next webinar, something you would like to learn about, please do let me know and I will absolutely consider to create another webinar on that subject. Thank you and uh, wishing you a lovely day, a wonderful weekend. Stay safe, healthy and uh, positive and keep on making beautiful hats.